And the first thing is um, that we need to have uh, our secured region. Uh, so we have to fight extremism and terrorism together. And uh, this is one of the agenda items we discussed. And in this regard, uh, uh, you know, the federal government of Somalia and its national defense force has to be strengthened. And that calls a strong federal government uh, with, um, uh, you know, the chief commander as the president leading the whole security uh, issues in Somalia. So I think the sole responsibility is that of the federal government of Somalia. But we, the regional countries, can support uh, this initiative. So in this regard, Ethiopia is keen to work very closely with the federal government of Somalia in fighting uh, uh, terrorism and extremism, and specifically Al-Shabaab and its stooges. We also discussed on uh, cooperation in uh, other security sectors because uh, uh, this is a, you know, uh, one people in two countries, so we need to secure our people. And we work uh, very hard uh, together to have uh, security, both uh, in Ethiopia and mainly in Somalia at this time, uh, but the entire Horn of Africa region and our continent. So I think this is one of the areas we discussed and uh, uh, agreed upon. The second issue is, uh, the whole problem is complicated because there is poverty. So we have to fight poverty with our tools and nails. Uh, in this regard, um, uh, we wanted to cooperate on uh, uh, areas like um, uh, education, uh, basically economic integration and economic development, and having a free flow of people, and transport of people and goods and services. Uh, between our uh, two countries. So we uh, decided that we will have uh, uh, transportation mechanisms that help our people, you know, integrate much more by free flow of uh, people uh, between our two countries. And we'll continue on with air transport as well, uh, that these transportation mechanisms are expedited between our two countries. That integrates uh, investment and trade between our two countries. And Ethiopians should invest in Somalia, as well as uh, Somalis invest in Ethiopia. And our respective uh, sectors will work uh, together to see that this, is, this becomes a reality. I think this is uh, the area we discussed on our economic integration. Beyond Ethiopia and um, Somalia, we also discussed uh, economic community of the Horn of Africa, uh, where uh, we, the same people, should have more uh, close economic integration. I think this is uh, one of the areas uh, we discussed. Beyond that, there is humanitarian issue uh, that has to be addressed. And not only between ourselves, but the international community has to engage in humanitarian aspect in Somalia at this time. Even though uh, both Ethiopia and Somalia are very much affected by the current drought, uh, I think Ethiopia is in a better position uh, to handle uh, this problem, but Somalia needs uh, huge support. So we agreed to call upon the international community to support the humanitarian catastrophe in, uh, uh, in, in Somalia. But this is a temporary problem, but we need to have a food security, uh, both in our two countries. So the Somali, the Somalia and its people has huge potential that can be harnessed, both in agriculture and livestock and water development. So we agreed to cooperate for lasting food security programs that can be emulated from Ethiopia to Somalia. And we agreed that expertise support can be uh, given from Ethiopia to Somalia to, until they come up with, the, with a strong uh, national system in, uh, in Somalia. So I think that <coughs> for now, uh, uh, the humanitarian issue has to be addressed as quickly as possible. Uh, besides, I think, uh, a new partnership agreement recognizing uh, the federal system of Somalia needs a strong uh, federal government in Somalia and also regional states which has got uh, constitutional rights that can be uh, worked out. But this strong Somali uh, federal government means uh, handling its security issues uh, properly and strongly. 
and uh, coordinating whatever happens in the country. The sovereignty and territorial integrity of Somalia is very important and that has to be observed. So I think uh, this is one of the areas that builds trust amongst countries and specifically now for Ethiopia and Somalia. So respecting the uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity uh, is one of the pillars for our relationship. And in this regard, uh, Ethiopia is ready to work on uh, the establishment of a strong uh, national defense force in uh, Somalia. Whatever the Somali federal government asks us, we are ready uh, to cooperate. But the sole responsibility of securing the country is that of the federal government of Somalia. So that has to be underlined in a proper way. And again, <coughs> uh, the diplomacy and foreign policy is led by the federal government of Somalia. And Ethiopia is ready to work uh, directly and uh, 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 in a direct line with the uh, federal government of uh, Somalia. So I think these are uh, the main issues that we have discussed. And any further issues uh, can be elaborated by uh, the president. And uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, and it's a really uh, great pleasure for me to be here today. And thank you for inviting me and my delegation to this state visit so soon after I was elected. So I want to thank you again for that. <clears throat> yes, uh, we discussed many issues, uh, including what the Prime Minister has said, that the Ethiopian government will deal directly uh, to the federal government of Somalia in the area of security, uh, because we're already working on uh, uh, to bring peace and stability in Somalia by fighting against terrorism in al-Shabaab who associate with al-Qaeda. So we have that history, and we have done a great job, and we will continue to strengthen that relationship. Also, we uh, discussed that the uh, foreign policy is also, that's the role of the federal government, according to our constitution, meaning that the prime minister and I will work together very closely his government and my government will have direct line to communicate in any issues that pertaining to our uh, foreign policy. Uh, thirdly, the monetary system um, also uh, lie on the federal government, which definitely uh, the federal government is in control when it comes for monetary system of the country, as well as immigration. Uh, there is a lot of movement between borders, and some of those people may be al-Shabaab or terrorist organizations. We will definitely communicate and collaborate uh, the immigration issues. So, uh, after all, this is a new day and new era for these two great countries to work together to bring peace and stability, and stability in the region. Also, we discuss about how we can fight poverty and improve the um, quality of life of our people. And to do that, definitely we have to increase the trade activities between the two countries and also to develop livestock, agriculture, and other areas we can work, that we can work together. This, is, this has been a fruitful, discussion and uh, great meeting and uh, uh, definitely our people will benefit if we work together very closely and we are ready to do, to do so uh, in the near future. And again, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for your open, um, open and, and, hosp and hospitality uh, for me and my delegation. Thank you again. And their aim is to establish a base or safe haven in which they can organize themselves and launch attack from Somalia to other countries, including the neighboring, our neighboring countries. Um, we have um, 
enough, we have enough support from our neighboring countries, including Kenya and Ethiopia, as well as other two, two contributory countries um, called AMISOM. Uh, they have been working with the government of Somalia side by side and died on the low cost to bring peace and stability in Somalia. And we really appreciate all their sacrifices they gave to Somalia and their sacrifice will not go in vain. My government has a very extensive and comprehensive strategy to defeat Al-Shabaab in two years. Of course, with the support of our neighboring countries, AMSOM, as well as international community, because Al-Shabaab is not only a threat to Somalia, but also throughout the world. They want only, they only use in Somalia a base, but their intention and their strategy is to go beyond the borders of Somalia. That's why we have to collaborate and work together to defeat them because they are a disease. They are not interested in for humanity and any type of development. So it's our best interest that Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya and all our neighboring countries to come together and fight this menace because this is a threat. It's not only a threat to Somalia but also other countries as well. Um. I think um, if I got the question right, uh, it is about the uh, regional contribution of Ethiopia uh, peace and peace and stability. And I think uh, Ethiopia's contribution is uh, well known globally. Uh, we are uh, contributing to peace in Somalia. The Somali people know uh, the government of Somalia, respective governments of uh, Somalia know it. And it's, uh, I think, a huge contribution a contribution by blood, a contribution by sacrifice. It's just not simple material contribution. So we have been contributing for peace and the stability of our region, uh, not only in Somalia, but uh, also in uh, uh, other neighboring countries and the continent, uh, including South Sudan. Sudan, uh, we, our peacekeeping forces are uh, working very hard in a very disciplined manner uh, to discharge the responsibilities. They are people-centered and therefore people like them because uh, they are very much integrating with the people of the country where they serve. So I think uh, this is um, a, a well-known uh, global record for Ethiopia. So uh, our contribution is huge, but we still need to contribute more uh, because we want to see uh, peace and stability prevail in the whole continent and our Horn of Africa, which everybody knows is a very troubled region. So uh, I think um, this is where we are. And I'm sure, as the president said, um, uh, sometimes this thing is misunderstood by some groups uh, which do not properly see the current Ethiopia in their own in the perspective. Maybe they see the old Ethiopia and they try to manipulate and bring about uh, the old Ethiopia into the current picture, which is completely wrong. The new Ethiopia is working very hard to see uh, uh, that we can either swim or sink together. There is no Somalia growing alone. There is no Ethiopia prospering alone. If we don't work very closely together and if we don't lift up our people out of poverty together, then none of us can thrive. So I think we believe that uh, this is very much intertwined uh, region and community, and uh, our contribution, our progressive uh, agenda will continue for the future as well. Yeah, before we wrap up this uh, press conference, we would like to give an opportunity to one journalist. I can you give this gentleman? Yes, uh, my name is Ali Abdullahi from Somali National TV. So I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, this is um, with the last question. We have been engaging with the Somali regional governments upon the permission of the previous uh, federal government. So we are not doing this directly. Uh, 
uh, whenever there is a need for any kind of uh, support and negotiation, we always inform uh, the federal government uh, with the permission of the federal government of uh, Somalia, then they come to Addis and they work. We have very close relationship with all Somali leadership. We have no separation and division within the Somali leadership. You know, we we'll follow same suit. As I said, the federal government is the sole responsible organ for foreign diplomacy and foreign policy. So without the permission and consent of the federal government of Somalia, Ethiopia and none other country should interfere into the uh, sovereignty and uh, integrity of the Somali national state. So I think this, we are very much clear about it. We are the, ourselves a federal government. Myself, I will not allow any country to directly involve with my regional governments without my consent. So I think the same applies to uh, the Somali nation. And I, we will be very clean and we are principle based. The whole intention is to support the Somali people and the Somali government to make peace and stability and ultimately fight poverty and bring prosperity to the people of Somalia. That's the whole objective. We, are, we have no other uh, motive and intention. So we want to continue with our fast economic growth and democratization in this country. If we, we need to do so, then we cannot leave others uh, you know, in a chaos being, without being supported because that chaos will come back to us. And our, uh, the spillover effect affects our fast economic growth. So it is for our benefit we are doing that, not only as a charity for Somali people. We are intertwined, and we cannot try without each other. So if you take an example of the Northeast Asian countries, none of them left behind. All of them were lifted up together. So we cannot leave some of us left behind. That's why our policy is to work closely with the federal government of uh, Somalia. That's why at the beginning I said foreign policy is the sole responsibility of the federal government of Somalia as is also uh, the national defense issue, is also the sole responsibility of the Somali uh, uh, federal government. So that's why we have signed uh, an agreement with the former uh, Somali uh, government on defense pact, which is clearly shows that we are very conscious of uh, the sensitivity of this issue. But we, have, we can also share our lessons. In falling and rising, we have learned about how federalism works. And if the Somali people opted for federalism, then they can learn, but they cannot copy because the Somali is a unique uh, arrangement. And, but there are principles that can be learned from Ethiopia and elsewhere where uh, federalism has been working. So I think this is uh, uh, the first uh, issue. And the second um, issue is, you know, in London Conference, uh, as a leader of IGAD, or as a chair of IGAD, I have the responsibility to represent IGAD uh, as, as, a con as, as a regional bloc. In this regard, the first thing is, there should not be many cooks. There should be coordinated support to Somalia. You know, until now, the support of the international community to Somalia has not been as successful as it is because there are a number of hands getting in there without being coordinated. So this is an opportunity for all the international communities acting together, speaking with one voice, for a coordinated uh, support to the Somali government and its people. So I think that's the first thing that we have to achieve. The second thing is Somalia needs peace and stability. And of course, there is contribution by the international community. But there should be a prescribed period of time where Al-Shabaab should be eliminated and the Somali Defense National Force be established. So I think this is the first agenda item that should be discussed and agreed upon. The second issue is recovering and reconstructing Somalia. Somalis themselves are not able to do so by, by themselves at this time. They need support. 
major countries, even Europeans, after being destroyed, being supported by other Western countries to take off. This is high time for Somalia to be supported, like the Marshall Plan. That has to be there for Somalia to take off. Uh, this is high time. And the third issue is humanitarian aspect. You know, now there is humanitarian catastrophe in Somalia, and we believe that this is, even though it's a temporary problem, as I said, but should be supported as quickly as possible. So I think these are the three major issues, but the partnership issue, lastly, is very important, and we should have a coordinated partnership uh, being demonstrated.